We're on day 21 now, and today I'm really excited to talk to you on this video because because it's about something that there's so much going on inside me uh, that okay we're just gonna get right into it so today is about sexuality and its link with creativity and how how I've been really stuck with this in uh in my life growing up in the US mm, the sexual culture if you will within that country is really fucked up in my opinion um in because you have two things going on one sex is like totally in your face all the time with um with the way that the media uh tv magazines billboards that they use that they use sex or like they use attractive um sometimes scantily clad women to sell stuff and and that's okay as it is because people have identified that this gets you this triggers some sort of emotion and makes you want to go buy something you know if if you believe that this product is going to make you more attractive or get you more sex in your life there's millions of people that are going to go buy it right away but on the other hand uh sex is like a really taboo thing as well in some circles it's not openly talked about there are many schools that teach sex education but they call it abstinence only sex education it's explaining to you the dangers of sex and why you shouldn't do it why you need to wait until marriage and then never explaining to the children how to deal with this stuff if they go out and have sex anyways they're not given any kind of education about um uh, like what that might be like with their experience um how to do it safely and how to how it can be something enjoyable rather than a traumatic experience and I know from myself and conversations I've had with other people that sex can be very traumatic um, and I'm not even talking about somebody who's who's raped or forced to have sex against their will even in cases of consensual sex it can really cause a lot of harm to both people involved sometimes they don't even realize it and uh, and so you have these two things that are happening on the one hand it's like totally in your face all the time but like without saying this is what's going on whereas in uh, in movies okay you can you can have a rated R movie and and see a woman's boobs okay you can have a rated R movie and see simulated or maybe in some cases these could be real acts of sex in a rated R movie but they can't really show the genitals. As soon as you see a penis or a vagina, 
it's gonna be like um, you're probably pushing that NC-17 rating much harder and filmmakers know that NC-17 is like the death of a movie if you get this rating good luck having your product succeed and make money and usually because movies are quite expensive to make the main objective as with so many things people do in life is making money so so they're gonna make sure that they're not including this stuff because they want a rated R and not higher You go on Instagram, and you can see pictures of girls where they're not wearing anything, or they're barely wearing anything at all. But as long as their nipples are covered, and you can't see their genitals either, these photographs pass the like community standards set by Instagram. But if you can clearly see a nipple, there's a good chance your photo is going to get taken down for, for failure to adhere to these guidelines. But if it's see-through clothing, if you can see the nipples through a t-shirt, that's okay. But if you can see the side of a nipple with a baby breastfeeding, That one's probably getting taken down. Or photos of women who have had mastectomies because of breast cancer. And showing these photos, they get taken down. And when I was in high school, how people would talk about sex so much. I would. And they, people would talk about penis size and, you know, how important, the, without saying how important it is, the conversations that I would hear made me think that penis size is very important. Okay? And although these conversations were happening, it was like, it seemed like it was coming from uh, like a place of fear, maybe, or like not really so much to uh, as like a celebration or embracement of this natural part of life, but this really perverse kind of way of dealing with it. And I remember seeing people in relationships with each other and having these very confusing emotions. Because I, by the time I was in high school, I was starting to convince myself that I didn't want a girlfriend because I believed that it would be too difficult and too much work and caused too much drama in my life because when I looked around me in the world it seemed like lots of people would have fights and arguments and lots of lots of hurt emotions and broken hearts and this and that and I said if that's what it means to be in love and to have a girlfriend then maybe I don't want to be part of that yet at the same time feeling this like really intense resentment towards these people because they could have these experiences, and I couldn't. So, our creativity is directly linked with our sexuality, because at its most basic, fundamental way, or fundamental element, sex is about creation. When you have sex, 
when, okay, when a man and a woman have sex, and they're both uh, fertile, this act can lead towards the creation of a new life. So it's really about creativity. So when your sexuality is blocked, your creativity is blocked. And because this is not just an issue for me, but but most people that I've ever talked to about these things or had experiences with show me that they've got really big blocks in this area of their life too and there's so many things that they could be creating and they're not because because they're stuck because somehow they're they have the belief that, that they're not good enough to create. That what they have to share with the world is not important. It's not valuable. That nobody's going to care or be interested or want to hear or see what you have to offer. But you know what? Fuck that. In fact, what people want more than anything is authenticity. They want you to... Uh, be open. They want you to be vulnerable and share with the world the gifts that you have to offer. How can you how can you hold on to this stuff because because you think that it's not good enough and there's somebody out there that wants and needs exactly what it is that you've got. And not only are you depriving them of the opportunity to receive that, but you're depriving yourself of the opportunity to grow into who it is that you could be when you reach your highest potential in life. So, wow. Day 21, okay.